Namaskar, I'm Ashok Vyaz and uh, these days are very special days. A lot of things are happening and uh, we will be talking about several uh, themes uh, which are uh, attracting our attention with Padmshi Dr. Sudhir Parikh in this weekly special show, This Week with Padmshi Dr. Sudhir Parikh. Dr. Welcome. Namaste. Namaskar. Namaskar. So let, let us begin uh, with recollecting how was your Deepavali this year? Well, Deepavali was uh, always, uh, it's a great festival. I'm always looking forward to Deepavali and uh, our Gujarati New Year. Uh, since I know uh, or I understand uh, since childhood, let's put it that way. And this year also, it was very good. And I always believe that uh, Deepavali is a very auspicious day. And always you try to uh, decide for next year what better thing you can do for the community, friends and relatives. Absolutely. So there is a sense of newness uh, with new year and new enthusiasm. And this year's Deepavali it has come at a time when we all are facing multiple, uh, call them challenges. And we are also hearing the third wave of COVID-19. Uh, keeping that in mind, uh, this Deepavali, uh, what was your special focus and prayer? Well, my prayer is that uh, we believe that uh, traditionally Deepavali is, uh, it's, we are, what, what is Deepavali? Deepavali we are celebrating, uh, we, are celebra we celebrate uh, uh, the victory of uh, good uh, over evil. So it means it's a, it's a, um, all the uh, bad thing or all the wrong thing should eventually die down. And that's what I'm hoping for and I'm praying for that after Diwali, all this coronavirus thing and uh, uh, suffering sh slowly should subside. Of course, everyone has to um, keep the mask on keep the distance from the other people, not to get together, uh, not even in the small group. And uh, we are hoping that uh, vaccines are coming, probably, hopefully, end of this month. And that will help everyone and to help resolve this uh, problem. Absolutely. Talking about resolving the problem, recently, uh, President Trump uh, announced about... Uh, a new discovery, some vaccine which is likely to hit the market soon. But there were some apprehensions about New York governor not having accepted. Can you tell us more about what, what is going on, where we are in terms of uh, getting uh, near the vaccine? Well, there are two, two uh, pharmaceutical companies. One is a Pfizer and so, the second one is a Moderna. Moderna. And both has completed their uh, third phase trial and their data has been submitted to FDA, one last week and one this week. And uh, hopefully within next two weeks, FDA will uh, go over, review it and uh, uh, approve it. And usually, uh, I mean, uh, the controversy between governor and uh, president, I think governor is kind of out of uh, line that way. Because this kind of vaccine, FDA, there is no politics there. It's all purely uh, science-based. So I don't think uh, um, that is the right thing. Because, I mean, one of the vaccine, uh, our, our practice, our group practice is a part of it in, uh, in the trial. So we know that this is nothing to do with the uh, Republican Democrat. I think governor is kind of a little out of... Uh, is off cough remark, which is does not serve the people. So probably he'll change his stand. Uh, normally he has proven to be a logical person, but many people are not understanding the logic with which President Trump is not willing to concede. Uh, what might be uh, the thought process behind it? Uh, what do you think? Well, I mean, that's a different story. It has nothing to do with a vaccine, right? Yeah, that's absolutely. a whole different uh, subject. And um, I think uh, American Constitution uh, says that according to the Constitution, when the election is very close, or anyone, um, challenger or the winner or loser, has uh, 
right to um, uh, go through the legal challenges because the election is so close. Uh, the number of, uh, you know, uh, win winning and losing uh, uh, in the few thousands. So I think uh, he, uh, all loser has right to uh, challenge that, go through the uh, whatever legal uh, process allowed by constitution. And then whoever wins, I'm sure, if uh, uh, President, uh, I mean Vice President Biden wins, uh, I'm sure uh, Trump should uh, uh, um, uh, congratulate him and uh, keep moving and let the new administration take over. But again, uh, we cannot rush into that because that's how our constitution is. That constitution tells us that uh, there are some certain dates are there, December 7th, which is all the state has to certify, and December 14th. Congress has to meet, convene, and uh, elect uh, president. So in the past, uh, about a few years ago, uh, uh, President Hayes was lost the election, but Congress has made him president. And the winner did not get the presidency. So that can happen because it's all constitutional thing. So, uh, so uh, I think uh, what president is doing right now there's no need to concede uh, uh, without uh, exhausting his, his right to, uh, to challenge the uh, kind of uh, result of the uh, counting. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. There's nothing uh, more to it. But I think uh, Democratic Party is like kind of little in a hurry to finish it up. And that's, that, that doesn't work probably in the democracy. The way you have objectively uh, taken a look at it uh, makes people uh, realize that it is not very out of uh, track or the way not just Democratic Party, but most of the American media, barring a few channels, is portraying President Trump as if he is um, sort of a villain in terms of not conceding and not accepting. And uh, they continue to paint, paint him in a bad light. But the way you said it, um, it, it feels like we are moving with the rhythm, which is a part of the constitutional provision. So moving towards the other side, the previous president just um, released one memoir, uh, President Barack Obama, in which he uh, shared his observation about Rahul Gandhi. You must have heard about it. And that has uh, caused a lot of um, uh, talks in India because um, Barack Obama uh, shares his impression that uh, sort of defining Rahul Gandhi as little immature and uh, not having uh, enough will uh, to learn, uh, but uh, acts as an eager student, something like that. You heard about it? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, aware of that uh, particular specific uh, comment, but uh, can, you, can you tell me in what reference he was saying? Oh, he was uh, in his book has uh, shared his impressions about multiple leaders across the world. And in India, when he writes, he talks about Rahul I see. Gandhi. I mean, of course, of course, I, I, I understand. So, of course, um, President Obama's uh, opinion has uh, uh, quite a uh, quite a bit of credence and and uh, quite a bit uh, uh, respect to it. And and therefore, I think that is his. Uh, personal observation and personal opinion, and I would uh, stop there because uh, again, uh, everyone has different personal opinion about uh, different people or different leaders. Absolutely, I appreciate I appreciate that openness and the way you have coolly left it, and that is fine. But in India, uh, even Congress leaders and others are also using it as an excuse either to. Um, nullify the impact that it is causing or to weave more of their thought pattern on what President Obama said. But moving towards the other side, um, Deepavali and every year, Prime Minister Narendra Modi um, celebrates Diwali with uh, armed forces. This year also he was in Jaisalmer. How do you, uh, what do you read in his uh, gesture and successively six or seven Deepavali he has been uh, with um, uh, soldiers, I think it's an excellent uh, gesture. I, I, I applaud uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, for uh, spending Diwali uh, with the Jawans on the borders at different uh, locations. 
uh, uh, every year, and that is a great uh, gesture. And if you recall, even American president, when our troops were uh, outside, they used to uh, celebrate Christmas in Afghanistan and Iraq and uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, other part of the world. So I think it's a tradition of the president or prime minister to, to uh, celebrate uh, 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 their own uh, large, uh, biggest uh, festival with the Jawans because Jawans are one who are really fighting for the country. And another important um event which on 12th number uh, one would say was virtual inauguration of the statue of Swami Vivekananda at Jawaharlal Nehru University uh, for which also virtually Prime Minister Nagar Modi uh, ji addressed and we have heard so much about what happened in JNU so having a statue of Swami Vivekananda requires additional significance. Uh, what do you read uh, behind this um, thought process which has resulted into a very, very impressive uh, statue of Swami Vivekananda in the premises of Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. I think I, I, I personally welcome the uh, statue of Swami Vivekananda in the, at JNU because, see, you have to remember that um, in the university, where it's a, it's, a, it's a hub for learning, right? Students learn there. They, they, they cultivate their uh, career there. They cultivate their life there. And there, they, they cannot be uh, either uh, leftist or rightist or, uh, or one-sided. And Swami Vivekananda is a leader of uh, not leftist or rightist, really. He's, he's, he's a leader for everyone. And he is the one who uh, took the Hindu Hinduism uh, outside India. And, and therefore, I think the uh, uh, statue of Swami Vivekananda is most welcome and most desirable thing Prime Minister did and we must congratulate Prime Minister for that. And another congratulation due for Prime Minister Narendra Modi from you, I think coming from Gujarat also, is that he has continued to maintain his hold uh, on uh, the imagination of Indians. Uh, that is demonstrated by recent uh, results uh, from Bihar, from UP, uh, and a few other states, but uh, mainly in Bihar. Uh, so, um, any uh, way you would like to react to this uh, recent consolidation of uh, Prime Minister Narendra uh, Modi's uh, impressive presence? Well, I mean, I must congratulate uh, NDA and pri particularly Prime Minister Modi uh, for his uh, uh, spectacular victory or kind of little unexpected um, uh, or according to the uh, newspapers and polls and so forth. Uh, it, it is a great victory and I think he needs, I mean, he deserves the congratulation from everyone. And I think it's a good for uh, India, good for uh, Bihar. And uh, this, this shows that Prime Minister himself uh, is very popular. All Indian loves him. And I think uh, that shows uh, with the result of the Bihar. So, uh, moving forward, uh, coming back to the rise of COVID and the way India is handling it, moving forward, what would you like to see uh, in terms of the precautionary steps on the part of uh, Government of India? Well, I think Government of India uh, should not uh, uh, be hurrying in opening up all these religious places and uh, and uh, other uh, um, uh, kind of uh, restaurant and all those things because in India the situation is as grim as USA, you know, almost 10 million uh, people suffering from COVID and a lot of deaths are happening too. So I think uh, we have to, just like USA, uh, they should kind of restrict um, uh, all this gathering uh, uh, in the vast majority of gathering, because it doesn't matter what you say, what you uh, put the guideline to uh, in, in, the, in the sports arena or in the movie theater or in the uh, uh, restaurant or, or in, the, in the religious places, people cannot, you cannot uh, uh, maintain uh, that COVID uh, guideline. And, and that leads to the more infection. And I think that it should be, it should not be allowed, or it should be allowed in very restricted way. Absolutely, and uh, 
as we wish happy deepavali in the beginning also uh, saal mubarak to but another serious uh, area which uh, requires our attention whether it is india or america we are witnessing increase in the number of people who are not able to appreciate life and they decide to uh, quit at this journey of life in an abrupt fashion uh, so indeed mental health deserves uh, special extra attention what can you think from media as well as uh, with all your philanthropic uh, activities uh, some additional ideas uh, which collectively we should work on well i mean um, we should work on um, make sure that all the uh, uh, opening uh, should be very slow and very systemic because of the threat of the corona virus is real is not gone away so till vaccine comes uh, or till more therapeutic uh, comes i think we have to go slowly and uh, uh, again um, it has another flip side that because of this uh, people are also getting fatigue of the corona virus right so that's why they are behaving the way they are behaving once they once you let them go out they will they will uh, act uh, kind of little irresponsible way uh, that's a human nature and third thing i think uh, things has to be open up because otherwise lot of people uh, will die at home uh, with the different uh, diseases other than corona virus so i think it's a very uh, sensitive uh, decision and one has to balance properly and one has to help those who are poor uh, who needs the food or who needs the shelter uh, government should provide them absolutely thank you very much dr shiv i think we covered uh, quite a bit Uh, of range and as we conclude uh, your concluding remarks from uh, this edition dear friends uh, i would like to wish you happy diwali and uh, to my gujarati friends uh, happy new year and uh, please remember this is a very auspicious days in our life diwali dipavali days and during these days we must remember to help each other respect each other love each other and particularly love and help less privileged uh, people those who are little less privileged than us more more than otherwise so please uh, help uh, your friends and family and the community uh, this is my message for the pavli thank you happy diwali again and uh, wish you uh, god bless america god bless india jai hind and wish you all the best thank you